time uh, as a developer advocate in Cloud Foundry. That's my blog. That's my Twitter. And since I was invited, but I couldn't make it to the real time conf US to talk about that. Yeah, I have to mention that I'm responsible for that thing. Anyway, I, I'm the author of this book, RabbitMQ in Action. And yeah, to start, just uh, getting to the the talk because we don't have much time. I w I want to discuss why we need messaging for people that weren't already in some of my conferences before or talks. Uh, you maybe seen that already. So the example I like to use because it's very uh, easy to understand is about uh, how we build classic web apps. Like if we are asked to build an image gallery, and then this gallery has two parts to upload pictures and show that in a in a gallery. We can say that it, that is very easy to to build until we start getting new requirements. So, for example, if we work in kind of Scrum or something like that, we can have a product owner that comes to us and say he, that he wants to notify the user friends whenever there are new images. So, once that also implemented as soon as possible, as usual, then some guy there in the company come and say that he wants to give badges to user, like gamification of our image gallery, and also send this stuff to Twitter. Then we have a sysadmin or Swiss admins, as they are in Switzerland. And these guys discover that we are uh, throwing money out of the window because of, of we are uh, displaying full-size images. And of course, it needs to be fixed by yesterday because or we are all getting fired. <laughs> And then there is a developer in another team that may need to use our stuff on Python or Java or who knows what, Factor maybe. And at the end, there is the user also, which is the most important part of this new feature and the one that we forget the most. And that guy always, I mean, I want to upload pictures. I don't care if you are going to gamif gamif gamify the web or whatever you call that. If you need to resize images, if you need to notify friends, I mean, not my problem. I want to click upload, see the image there. And then at the end of the story, it's us with that three letters. Anyway, let's see the, the code evolution, see what happens. The code is Erlang pseudo code, which I find very easy to read, contrary to popular, popular belief. So these are the comments, then the function name, argument, the body of the function. Are so when we got the first implementation, that's what kind of what we could build, a controller getting an image and storing the image somewhere. Then we, OK, we need to resize it. We need to notify the friends of the user. We need to add points to the user. And we need to tweet about the new image. So the question is, can this code scale to new requirements? What happens if we need to speed up image conversion? What if we need to notify the users by email instead of Twitter or whatever? What if we need to stop tweeting about new images? What if we need to resize in different formats? Or we need to swap the language technology without any uh, downtime? So. Is there a, so a way to do this better? Can we do it better? Of course. I'm here to sell you messaging, so yeah, we can use messaging. And this is very easy. It's the pub sub pattern, publish scribe. This is from the book Enterprise Integration Patterns. It's a pretty cool book if you want to re learn about all about messaging. Uh, and yeah, here in this example in the book, there is an address change event, and this event is processed by three different consumers or subscribers. So if we move the implementation to that, we can have the, we do the image upload, we get the image back, then we create a message. So we have this kind of record in Erlang with the user data and the image data, and we publish that and we use a tag called new image. Then 
we can start a new process saying on new image, notify friends, on new image, add points, and so on. For people using Node.js, this is very common, I would say. But the thing in Node is everything in the same process. Here, we can have all separate processes. I mean, not in Erlang, in, if we use messaging. Just the Erlang is an anecdote here. Anyway, and then there is no second implementation. We just deploy that first part of the code, and we don't care what will come next. Once we get more requirements, we we start adding them as separate processes, but not really in our app, so we don't need to deploy again, and, and so on. Also, if we want to swap any of these, we just swap the, the technology on that particular consumer, but not really on the first uh, part. So the other part of this talk is about RabbitMQ. And maybe if you never hear about RabbitMQ before, you want to know, well, what is it? So Rabbit is a multi-protocol messaging server. This means uh, you can call against Rabbit in ANQP, Stomp, or MQTT. It also is under the Mozilla public license. It's a polyglot broker. This means you can talk to it also with many languages. And it's written in Erlang. Erlang again. Why? Why do I care that this is written in Erlang? The thing is, Erlang has many concurrency libraries, uh, all this message passing, the OTP framework for reliability when you deploy the broker, and so on. And the advantage of it being in Erlang is that the RabbitMQ developers are not writing that code themselves. So it's less code, less bugs, a uh, pretty trusted solution like Erlang. And also, if tomorrow you can, let's say, this is how we got RabbitMQ in production in a company I worked before. Like we tested CouchDB, and it was really, really re resilient in production. We kind of sent everything that went through, through our app to CouchDB in one of the crappiest servers because management didn't even want to to pay for a server where we run Erlang. It works, and then also we could get Rabbit in because we we say, look, it's the same technology, and okay, let's let's go. And if you have Rabbit, for example, you can make the case for another Erlang thingy or your own Erlang code. About multi-protocol, uh, those are all the stashes that <laughs> RabbitMQ support. <laughs> My kind is not supported. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and yeah, this blog post down there is written by a, a colleague, Andy Piper, and he explains why he may want to use ANQP, MQTT, or Stomp. And by Polyglot, I mentioned it supports many languages. You have PHP, Node, Erlang, Java, Ruby, .NET, Haskell, and many more. Closure, I don't know, Factor, whatever. And yeah, the cool part, the Erlang client, the Java client, and the .NET one are supported by the RabbitMQ developers. So that's also cool to have. And yeah, I'm always asked, like, because I do this RabbitMQ talk, and then people come back, is somebody using that? It's like a toy somewhere? I don't know. Yeah, there are people using Rabbit, like Instagram, Indeed.com, uh, Mailbox app, or Mercado Libre. Mercado Libre is like the world eighth, eighth biggest retailer, and they, are, they cover the whole Latin American uh, market. So you can imagine the whole population of Mexico, plus Brazil, plus Argentina, plus Uruguay, yeah. And <laughs> we, we make the difference. <laughs> they need to scale because of us. Anyway, and <laughs> yeah, and yeah, they are all using Rabbit, so it's not a toy. It's not just a random animal running in your server. And if you want to use it, that's the, the place to get it. Now we are on version 3.0.4, but in the next version, uh, I work building a package where you don't need to start Erlang to run Rabbit. It's all in the same, in the same binary. So it's similar to that binary.tars.jz, but we'll, we'll pack Erlang together. So this is, I know Ara like to talk about usability, but I like to talk also about usability for developers to say, hey, I don't want to use your broker because I need to wait 30 minutes for, for it for compiling Erlang. There is where trying to make you just download 
entire run as it should be, not installing dependencies. Anyway, stop ranting and continue. <laughs> How can we start using messaging today? That's another question. Enter Cloud Foundry. I'm also here to sell you Cloud Foundry, so <laughs> you need to hear this part. <laughs> so beside the, the that I'm being paid by Cloud Foundry, <laughs> why Cloud Foundry is good for messaging? So some aspect that Cloud Foundry has as a platform, as a service, is that once you have an account, it supports many applications per account. So what we said before of having like a front end and many backends, uh, you can have that in Rabbit, in, in Rabbit, in Cloud Foundry. So nothing new. It supports many services per account. So you can have RabbitMQ, MongoDB, Redis, whatever. But the cool part is that all the services can be shared across uh, your application. So it's, they are not isolated per app. They can be all shared and support RabbitMQ by default. So one thing with Cloud Foundry, very quick, is like there are two versions, the paid version, cloudfoundry.com, then there is cloudfoundry.org, this is the open source version, which has more stuff, actually. <laughs> so in the, in the open source version, there is Python support, Erlang support, PHP support, uh, some other services I don't remember, but uh, by default in the .com version, you can use Rabbit, Redis, Postgres, MySQL, and so on. I, I, don't, I don't remember all. Anyway, I wanted to show you Clustergram, which is uh, an Instagram clone, kinda, <laughs> very kinda. It supports real-time updates. So the idea is like when you upload a new image, you see the, the image coming to your feed in real time. So if you are follow me, following me, you will get this new image popping up there and so on. And it has many image feeds. There are the latest images feed, the logged out images. So if you're a logged out user, we still want to show you something. This is that. And then there are the logged in users. So there are many feeds according to what's going on, but they are all updated in real time according to new image upload. So we need to decide. There is a new image. Who has to see this image and where? And it's using Cloud Foundry, RabbitMQ, Redis, and MongoDB. And SockJS is for the real-time bits in, in Node. So yeah, RabbitMQ is for doing communication. Redis, I uh, use it to store all the data for the user. So like your list of images, your list of followers, the list of who you follow, the amount of people you follow, and so on. And MongoDB is just to share the, the images with uh, grid FS across all the, the apps. So because we can have many instances of Cloud Foundry running, imagine there we are running three instances of this app. And they're all communicated together using uh, Rabbit. And there is a second app. So at the beginning, I built everything using Node. And then I move the resizer from Node to Closure. So we have the front end app in Node, the resizer is also in Node, and then I just swap them uh, in Closure to, to see if, it was, if, if what I preached before was actually working. <laughs> so you probably want to know more about how this works. Let me show you the app here. No, not there. That's the app, clusteram.cloudfoundry.com. You can log in or make an account. This is completely, I mean, user unfriendly, <laughs> I would say. It's basically what I sent to apply for a job at, at VMware or, Cloud, or Cloud Foundry. <laughs> and yeah, all these images have been used by, uploaded by users. For example, this one, I have no clue if this image popped there like a week ago. So this, my app has actual users, <laughs> maybe more than your startup. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, sorry. Anyway, that Alvaro guy, of course, is me. But yeah, this girl, I don't know where she came from. Sarah, KT, this I think was a conference. Yeah, so there are some apps, some things there. Anyway. 
now this is the logged in feature, so if any of you dare to upload an, uh, an image, it should appear there. If I do that myself, it should be shown there. I can try, but I don't know how fast the connection is. So, move, move, move. <laughs> Let me take a picture. No, I don't know. Let's leave it there. Anyway, you can try it if you, if you, if you want to see how it works. Then the code is in Bitbucket, and the other part, the closure part, is also in Bitbucket. Because uh, when I don't want people to know what I'm coding, I put everything in Bitbucket. <laughs> That's the, <laughs> the the backup part, basically. Let me. I try. I don't know if it works. Anyway, so let's see the code. So this is a very simple uh, Node.js app. It has like using Express and, and so on. I don't know if you can see there. Plus some libraries I, I, crea I created for this. And basically at the end, let me go down. You have this beautiful callback thingy where I create the MongoDB connection, then the RabbitMQ connection, and so on. I don't know. I was learning Node.js when I did that, so if there is a better way, I'm Pretty sure James will talk about uh, promises, and he will say what's the better way to do it. Anyway, the thing is that there is an upload image form, and after I store the image in MongoDB, this is the key part where this library Samper sends a message to RabbitMQ, and it will send it to this address, right? So how does it work? In Rabbit, then also trying to improve the way to demo RabbitMQ, I created this RabbitMQ simulator, where you have a producer, which is the uploader, and you have the consumer, which is where you want to make the resize happen. So there is this address there, which is called cluster and upload. So there. We have the address or exchange in the terms of Rabbit where I want to send this message. But the message goes nowhere because there, are, there is no queue at this point. So where or who is actually subscribed to cluster and upload? Let's search in the code here. I have a consumer that is using a, is subscribed to Cluster and upload using the queue, resize queue. So basically, this looks like this. So now when I send the messages, they are queued in the, in the resize queue. Then when I start one of the cluster RAM instances, we have the consumer getting the messages. If I go in Cloud Foundry and say I want to have two instances for the app, because of the way I coded that Node.js thing, it will have a second consumer, and, and so on. So yeah, that's the first part. Please, mouse, come to me. <laughs> yes. But after all the resize is happening, there is again Thumper publish message cluster and new image. So what's going on here? I finished resizing the image, but I want to do something else. So if I search, <coughs> we have a consumer which is called add image to user consumer. So this consumer will go to the ready entry for that particular user and uh, will add the image there. So what we have here is that these guys there, they also have a producer, which also has exchange, 
And once this guy finishes, it will send a message to the new image exchange. And then there will be a queue called add image to user. Then there is another queue for the same message, which is a new image queue. Let's see what one what is what is it doing. Oops. This new image queue will, will add the image to the latest images of that guy, of that user. Then there is a new one called image to followers queue, which added to the image to the followers of the user and so on. And then this library <coughs> grabs this kind of objects, tamper, sorry, and it knows how to start them. And that's pretty much what's going on there. So of course there are more queues there, and I won't bore you adding all this to the to the diagram, but we have from, from one side the the images coming in, then they are resized and then they take this second path where I do many things. But this one, the add new add image to user queue. Once the image is there in the user list, it will uh, do a broadcast. So here there is also another one. It starts getting complex. That oops, change it. That will start broadcasting that we have a a, a new image and so on. So what happened with uh, this new image? Here is where I have the SOC.js part. So this is connected to the browser. And I have the RabbitMQ consumer again. This one will listen to, to the new image exchange. And it's using a trick in Rabbit. So in Rabbit, if you've seen here, whenever I add a new queue, this has this kind of random name. So if you don't want to think about this naming uh, queues, Rabbit will uh, assign a, a name for the queue. That is what's happening here. So I just want a queue that whenever there is a new image, it will broadcast to the user that uploaded the image. Let me see if this works, but I don't know if it will. If somebody. Whatever. I don't know what was that. Then there is a, another consumer, same exchange, broadcast new image, where in this case, it will send to all the anonymous user uh, logged into the, I mean, in the website or at the website. And the final one will send to all the followers of, of the user. So we get all the followers from Redis, and for each follower, we send the, the, the message. And basically, I start all those uh, three consumers. And at, at the end, or the final piece of the puzzle, is this broadcast library that, that is connecting via SOCJS to the, to the browser. And it, it, it always keep a hash of the users that are, are connected. There is one for, for logged out users and one for logged in users. So the logged in users, they have a user ID. So Whenever you upload an image, I know who you are. I pick that user, search your followers, send the image to you, send to your followers, and so on. And the one for the uh, unknown users is just like whoever is in this uh, array, send, all, send to all of them the, the new image broadcast. So not that one here. <laughs> So what I did there was to have the first Node.js implementation, then move that to, to, oops, to closure for the, for the resizer. This is the, the project where you can get the code. And because of messaging, I could do all the auto scaling. So when in Cloud Foundry, I add more instances to the app, I can all make them talk together because uh, by using Rabbit. I can do all this broadcasting also by using Rabbit. You can see we can have many chains or, or hops where we say, this is the first thing to do. When this is over, do that, do that, and so on. So to finish this talk, with messaging, we can scale. We can scale up for processing, 
or if we need to scale up to new requirements or we need or if we need to scale down so it's not always about adding new, more servers what happens when you don't have that many users online you probably want to shut down those amazon instances uh, with messaging that's pretty easy to do we can have a high level of, of decoupling not only of, on how we code but actually on how we can separate all the apps on, on their own and we can tackle the polyglot pr problem like okay I want to maybe use node here but uh, I have a very good library for that particular problem in closure or or whatever language and we can easily bring all these technologies uh, together and yeah if you want to use Cloud Foundry where yeah we'll do all the heavy lifting for you all the services are installed and so on you can run multi apps multi services and do cloud messaging if you want to use it I got this code maybe it's too down there but if you want to register real time 2013 you will get you an account right away so if you have questions, I will be around. There is no more time. Thanks.